Okay, so I managed to actually get pretty far in my hat. It's not really my hat, but this is an order for someone who wanted a hat. And when he had did the corners as well, as you can see, pretty awesome. But by the video, I kind of showed you guys how to kind of start doing the design of your piece or actually putting on the beads and just doing what you want to do. And yes, I know this one is cardboard because I felt the sides and you can feel the ribs inside it from one side. The other side, you can't really feel it, but you feel the waves in the cardboard. So like I said, deep. Graduated caps come with different materials. Sometimes it's pretty soft, like this one is. Sometimes it's a lot harder. Harder, more silver piece, where you have to use all to go through it. But fortunately enough for me, this is pretty soft. I left one corner purposely so I can show you guys how to do I did the corner. As you can see. I did almost all solid blue color. And here's the back side of it. Pretty pretty nice. So for doing this to do this, hey, okay, Mr. Corner. I will start from the back side, I don't know why, but I always do come up through and this is double threaded. I pull a little tighter just for the knot to be a little under from where it is when I mean, you can't see it. There it is, I pull it so it can't be seen. The beads go over. But the hardest part about doing this is actually getting your needle to be set right in the correct position. So I just start in the corner here and work my way on to the inside here. So where I want to be at is roughly right next to this over to this line here. Or actually one of these. So you can see there. I'm actually next to that bottom this section here just gold in on the side I'm right next to it I actually need to come down a little more some more in line with that bottom part so this first part you might want to kind of wiggle way around so as you can see I'm actually pushing on that bottom gold side on the side and that works out pretty good for me and then my third will get caught everywhere. Pull through, and this is where I will start from. So it's kind of a cross hatch or herringbone pattern where you kind of overlay each other. So start from here, make sure it's fairly tight, work way around. Just wrap your beads around until you get a good ruby to sit in there quite well. I mean, you may have to add some, you have to subtract some, but still. Put your needle through. And with this one here, I actually have to go up at an angle, but not too steep of an angle. Just slightly up at angle. So when I pull it through, your string actually comes up above the row you just set. So you see, it just came out right above it. So now I need to come the opposite direction. With this navy blue. And you work your way basically back and forth like that. <laughs> so from the bottom position here, I start and wrap my way around, come back around this way. I'm short one bead, so I need to add one bead. And go through, and you want to line up. 
just like I said, your needle needs to be right up against your last your last ray you put on. So as you can see, it's right up against it, but there's enough space away from this. So it's kind of a tricky <laughs> maneuver to get in. Hopefully you understand it visually because I'm not really explaining it that well. Just because I'm using like one color for the corners. Actually two colors. Using navy blue and this translucent sapphire. Just to really highlight it. Plus I'm going against a blue background. So most of the mistakes or anything I do will be hidden. So again, you want to wrap it around. Holding your beads tight. And here's where you want to actually subtract or add beads. So with me right now, it's take away two. Drop the one. Actually. Yeah, that's right. So you want to work way back and forth like that. Doing one side and switch it to the other side. Kind of like if you do the left side, then you gotta do the right side. And you're overlapping that part of it. Just make sure you have your tight, everything be kind of tight. So once you do get to the front here, you know how much to take off. And you're kind of staying in that center. Upward push. So you're basically aiming towards this corner and kind of going upwards, just in this section here. When you're coming through. And you're straight well tend to get caught on everything. Which I do hate. So one, two, I think I'll do two. How many do I do? And depending on how you do the corner two. See, like mine's not perfectly square. So I'm only going to do three per side. So I did the, the navy blue. Now I'm going with this. Like I said, sapphire blue. I'm going to do it one more time around the corner. This one needs one more. Two go through here. Actually, which way am I going with this? Okay. So once you do this, it does tend to press down or compress the part we're sewn into because there's a lot of tension that's being pushed in and not actually indent. So this one here, as you can see, it kind of indents into it. On the back side, this one pretty much did the same thing. It really did, it did indent, but it's not really too noticeable. Not too bad. It just all depends on how much tension you put onto it because you are beating into this almost the same area, that same line twice. Opposed to this one, you're just going through it once. So this will be a little more solid, but this will actually kind of Crinkle and crunch. So I try not to put too much stress into it or I don't, I don't go too far to the edge. Because once you get that far, you'll really have nothing to go on to. Oh, man.
and be sure to actually like go back and check make sure everything's set right because sometimes when you pull it your bees won't be actually be inside the area you want to be and if you're done too your thread does get caught on these like your other ends are the button on top. I think I'll do one more on the side just to keep it square because it's not really a square top. I mean, at this point, it's basically your preference on how you want to do this. This end. Was it exactly the amount we need? So once you're doing your last bit and you get to this point, I mean you can keep going if you want. But what I do is kind of press it down because it's basically just cloth here at the end. And I come around with this bit and I kind of compress it down. So it rounds over the top. And actually holds the extra fabric that's underneath the top of it down a little more. That's what I did for the corners. Kind of gone through the same section. Yeah, my thread moved on me. But I can just press down, move it to the center, and there you go. I have it. And then I'll run a row of beads over that to cover that thread so it's not seen. Which should only be like six beads. Oh, I'm using 12s and our 13s. Six, 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 six. Nope. Two more. So six, seven, eight. Going through the same spot again, but at a going through, but I want to be off to one side because this will actually wrap the middle portion of it. I'm gonna make sure my thread's even, and there it is, that's in the middle part of it. See. Now I'm on one side of it, as you can see, that can go across here. If you're good at this, you can estimate how many you need. I'm going to guess five. So do the middle part first and I go across. Oh, look at this. This is a dark. Actually, it's two. One, one more. So I'm trying to have it set so it's closer to that middle bunch area I'm working on. Before it comes through for my next row of beads. So I'm push it through and this is where it's gonna go. In that little bare area right there. So the last one took six, so it will be roughly six again. And I'm just going to run it right next to it in the area. And this part here, it doesn't really matter where it's going to come and come out. And just pull it in and just guide your beads into that right section. Because then you want to turn it over, make sure none of your beads are doing anything funky or your strings in the wrong place. Which one it was. That's kind of threw me off there, that little white section. Right here. But if you have a bunch of markers, <laughs> instead of something like that, your, 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 your thread's being shown. Get yourself a bunch of Sharpies 
and this color in. And there it is, it's gone. So if your thread is showing, just get some Sharpies. I have a whole set of Sharpies. Then you just go through, color it in, and it hides your thread. Or whatever white spots you have. And it looks very, very clean. As you can see. It's nice, it's rounded over. It's not too much. It's not too bulky. He's in size 13 Charlotte Cuts. And the way I use to tie this off is I just sew through this a few times. Just make sure that my string is not overlapping and my beads are going to be pop up and pull on my beadwork. Weird. So let's kind of sew it through like three or four times. I'm getting towards the end. So the tension of it being sewn on top of the other. Sewn through a few times will actually hold it in place. So like that. And I'll pull it tight. So then it cinches everything up together. All those three tacks. Then I'll get my... Where did I put it? The exacto knife. Get close to what I want and just trim it off and just like that I got my corner done so that corner is done that corner is done that corner is done and that corner is done I mean that's basically the look I mean, I'll do a reveal on this later, but not right now. I still have the... I'm not sure if they want the tassel in. I gotta ask the client if they want me to be the, cast, the tassel on this little section. But I do have a feather to go along with this to bead. But this is basically just a graduation cap and how it's done. I mean, all I do is go... Just like that. And that's the underside, top side. Um, I say I did a really good job. I don't know. I guess I'll find out what the claim says. <laughs> but that's it.